Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Deacon Sakona Prince of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is our pastor. And I'm going to be reviewing the Sunday School lesson coming out of the Faith Pathways book, the Winter Edition. But before we get started, I do want to start in a quick word of prayer. So let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for an opportunity to gather in your name and be able to study your word. Pray next right now, Lord God, that you would just lead and guide us in the way you will have us to go. God, give us the God, give us the wisdom and insight from your word today and allow us to take your word and hide it in our heart that we may not sin against you. God, we pray right now that you would just bless those who are tuned in, those who are watching. Bless this nation, this country, and this world. God, bless us with the blessing we stand in need of. And help us be mindful of who you are and whose we are. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Man, well, the lesson we're going to be studying today is going to be lesson two. The date is December the 13th, 2020. And we're in the first unit, which is unit one. And the unit subject is the beginning of a call. Our lesson subject for today is call to participate in a promise. The in fact, devotional reading comes from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. The background scripture comes from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And the printed passages come from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Our key verse says, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. Our lesson name says that as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. Remember the story of the angel's announcement to Joseph of Jesus' birth. Receive, or should I say rejoice, that the birth of Jesus fulfilled God's promise to be with his people and live with greater awareness of God's abiding presence. If those of you who've tuned in before, you know now is time for the glasses. So let's go on and get into this real quick. Our introduction says, how many times have you made a weak excuse for not doing what God would have you to do? I'm busy. I really don't want to work with that group. That is an inconvenient day for me. I prefer more visible assignments. No one is going to know whether I do it or not. They didn't want to do it when I first offered. Our long list of excuses never seem to end. But God is not interested in hearing any of them. God operates his kingdom by the work and labor of those whom he has gifted and assigned to serve. When God gives you a particular gift, great or small, he expects that you will use that gift to serve and bless others, to advance the purpose of his kingdom, to obey his commands, to fulfill his divine purpose and or to bring glory to his name whether inside or outside the church. It says, often we are slow to act on what God would have us to do because we are shy or perhaps fearful of what others may think or say. Sometimes God directs us to do things that may be unpopular or difficult for others to accept and understand. Do you have the courage to say yes to God, even if it costs you the approval of others? That's a good question. Even though the task to which God called Mary and Joseph would be considered controversial and difficult, they were willing to do whatever God asked them. To. God takes no pleasure in service that is given with a reluctant, half-hearted or begrudging attitude. It is a privilege to serve God in whatever he has gifted and called us to do. If God has called us to a task, he will certainly provide the ability 
and provision to get it done. It may not be easy, but it will never be impossible. God uses ordinary people to fulfill his promise and plan for their generation. Sometimes with good intention, we aspire to do things that are beyond the scope of God's call. Some people may want to teach or lead, for example, when God did not call or anoint them to the task. God does not look for ambitious volunteers. God always knows exactly what he needs for any given task. Any woman could bear a child, but God called Mary, a young virgin, a godly woman who was up for the task of caring for and nurturing God's own son and stripped enough to bear the weight of a public misunderstanding regarding the child's birth. God has a great divine purpose for this generation. He has already provided what you need to do what he asked you to do. The question is, are you willing to and ready to serve? Even when your tasks seem huge and complicated, let God lead you into sharing his gift. Amen. Destined to save from birth. This is the analysis on the biblical text. Uh, it says here, and we're going to be reading Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 21. And the word of the Lord reads, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother, Mary, was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make, a public ex make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The commentary says Matthew opens this section with a description of the birth of Jesus. Matthew shared the private internal wrestling of Joseph, which began with the explanation that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit while Mary was engaged to Joseph. This verse further shares the fact that Jesus was born before Joseph and Mary were intimately involved. Joseph knew that the public ridicule of an unwed pregnancy would be a heavy burden for, for Mary. In fact, a premarital pregnancy would have meant embarrassment for both families of the engaged parties. Although both Mary and Joseph were innocent of fornication, it would have or it would be hard to defend a pregnancy against accusations of apparent immorality. The pregnancy suggested that either Mary had been disloyal in the relationship or that both Joseph and Mary had dishonored the religious customs and laws of the culture. This verse reveals the moral character of Joseph, saying that he was a just man. Because of his devotion to God and respect for the law, Joseph contemplated the best way to end the marriage in a quiet and discreet manner. This internal conflict is the reality for those who live in a culture whose laws do not always fit God's plans, purpose, and process. The penalty of adultery under the law of Moses was death, and Joseph pondered the best course of action. An angel of the Lord appeared, telling him to proceed with the marriage without fear and explained that Mary's child was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The angel further revealed to Joseph that the child's name would be Jesus. And he explained the reason for the name. From before his birth, Jesus was destined to be our salvation, the saving grace of, for God's people. 
Whew. Talking about a situation to be in as a husband and nowadays, you know, and I know the commentary talked about being engaged. It was a little different in that culture because when you were espoused, you were legally bound to the person, even though y'all hadn't been married, even though y'all hadn't consummated the marriage. That's why he would he was minded to put her away or to divorce her. And nowadays we get engaged and we call off the engagement, but in their culture that was legally binding. So she was already a spouse. She was promised to him. And yet that's when God chose. After they after the espousal, after they had that had actually gone into, dare I say, covenant, if you will, to, you know, to be married, God, that's when he appeared to Mary. And I can imagine Joseph, you know, like most men would have a hard time believing what she was saying. And so God took it upon himself to send an angel to make sure that Joseph truly understood what was happening, what was going on. Now, could Joseph explain everything? No. But one thing I know is that when God talks to you and God gives you the peace of knowing that what he's doing is it may be over your head, but it's under his feet. You you may not be able to understand it, but God knows exactly what he's doing. When you trust God, you don't have to know the ins and outs of it. You just have to be willing to take him at his word and do what he called you to do and let people let the chips fall where they may, as they say. Because people are going to say what they're going to say. They're going to think what they're going to think. They're going to talk what they're going to talk. But if you know for a fact that God has called you to a particular area, to a particular uh, service, don't worry about what people say. But you need to make sure before you even step out there that it was God that spoke to you. Not your intuition, not your friend or your mother, your father. But you need to make sure that it was God. And in this case... God went to Joseph and helped him to understand what he was doing. He gave him instruction through the angel so that he would know exactly what was going on. So he so he didn't have any fear of thinking that Mary had been unfaithful to him. But it, but it had been prophesied. And I'm sure that Joseph had heard. He said he was a just man. So he had obviously had had a relationship with God on some level. And I'm sure he had heard about the promised Messiah. And little did he know that God would use him and his espoused wife to help raise the Savior of the world. I mean, that that's a huge responsibility to lay that on a brand new couple. I mean, marriage is hard enough by itself, but to throw that in there. But see, God knew that they could handle it. He knew that they could deal with it. He knew. My question to you is this. What does God know that you can handle? I know oftentimes we get so caught up in the fact, Lord, why am I going through this? Well, if God allowed you to go through it, he knew you could handle it. He wants you to shine as only you can by trusting in him and by giving him the glory. And so that's what Mary and Joseph did. What can God trust you with? What can God trust me with? Mm -hmm. I ain't leaving myself out. You're saying to y'all, this is all. All right, our next section says, destined to be with us from birth. Matthew chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. And the word of the Lord reads, Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Then Joseph being raised from deep sleep or from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. and He called his name Jesus. The commentary says Matthew moves to connect the Jewish readers to their heritage 
by reminding them of Isaiah's prophecy concerning the birth of the Messiah, that a child would be born of a virgin. Matthew introduces a child as Emmanuel, God with us, which is more than a name or a title. The angel revealed that Jesus would not only be salvation, but also God incarnate, dwelling on earth. From this revelation, Joseph awakes from his dream and does not ponder, question, debate, or seek a great explanation of what has been shown to him. Clear that he was doing God's will, Joseph immediately proceeded to take Mary as his wife. Joseph's reaction to the angel is similar to that of Mary's. You can see Luke chapter 1 verse 38 for that. In that both had an immediate response to the word of God and shared as shared by the angelic visitation. Their response mirrored those of many others from the Old Testament who obey God's call without hesitation. Sometimes the thing God requires may be contrary to popular thinking or common religious practice. God pondered or Joseph pondered God's word to him, considering like the matter confirmation or confirm the instructions and obey as God directed. The text further notes that verse 25 or in verse 25, Joseph discipline and integrity in refusing to consummate the marriage sexually until after Jesus birth as directed the couple name the Christ or the child Jesus. The official public naming took place in accordance with the, with Jewish tradition eight days after his birth. God has planned, planted a gift within each of us. The moment we realize the purpose or the presence of God's gift is when we must move by faith to understand and share the gift with others. Mary and or Joseph and Mary understood early that Jesus was born for a purpose that was greater than the family life and identity that Joseph could provide. Joseph received Jesus as his own earthly child through public dedication at the temple. But Joseph and Mary knew that Jesus was not their child, but God's own son, a gift of salvation to the world destined to be with us from birth. There's so much in that passage of scripture and there are so many things that are just racing through my mind. When I considered Joseph's response to what the angel had told him, how he immediately acted and didn't hesitate. I mean, that, that took faith to believe what was told you, even in a dream. When you have an encounter with God, it's unmistakable. It's not fear, it's not anxiety, it's not animosity. When you have an encounter with God, there is such a sense of peace, a sense of assurance and calmness in his presence that Joseph didn't even second guess. He didn't have to go ask his father or anybody else. He didn't go get any second opinions. He just did in spite of what they may have said or thought, he did it anyway because he knew in his heart of hearts that it was God talking to him. So my encouragement to you is that whatever it is that God has called you to do, you need to have that level of assurance, that level of assurance to know that it was God. He called me to do this. And I have to do it. I have to do it. I was sharing with someone the other day about the importance of knowing if something comes from God. And I gave them three easy steps uh, that they could use to know whether or not something came from God. Step number one is that the thing won't go away. It won't go away. I mean, it keeps coming up. It keeps showing up. Because see, the thing about God is he's immutable, which means you can't shut him up. You can't grab the remote and go, stop talking, God. It's not going to happen. God's immutable. You can't shut him up. So whatever God has and wants for you to do, it's going to keep coming up. That's the first thing. It, it won't go away. But the second thing is, whatever, it's gonna, whatever it is God calls you to do, it's going to take faith. 
That means you're going to have to trust God in doing it. You're going to have to take him at his word. You're going to have to exercise your faith by following through on what he has called you to do. So that's the second thing. It's going to take faith. But the third thing is, in the end, God's going to get the glory. That's right. God's going to get the glory. God is going to be glorified by whatever it is he's called you to do. So just to recap, those three steps. Number one, it won't go away. It won't go away. It always keeps showing up. Number two, it takes faith to accomplish it. You have to trust God in some capacity to get it done. And number three, in the end, God gets the glory. Now, taking that same little formula or that same little acid test and applying it to our lesson today. When God came to Joseph, he didn't have to come to him time and time again. When God showed up in that vision with an angel, that that wasn't going away. He didn't turn over, and wake up and then go back to No, He was in the vision. God shared it with him in such a way that he knew it was God. But then he had to have faith when he woke up from that dream. He immediately acted upon what God told him to. And again, when you've had an encounter with God, there ain't no second guessing. There ain't no, there ain't no another opinion. You don't need to have a vote. You don't need to call a committee. When God has spoke to you, it's just time. It's time to do. It's time to put up or shut up. And actually, it's just time to put up. It's time to, it's time to put the action in and put in the work because you know it came from God. So he actually had faith to know that it was God that spoke to him. But in the, but in the end, the third thing is, God gets the glory and God got the glory out of Christ's life, out of Mary's life and Joseph, even just them being a young married couple. And Joseph waited after he had gotten married to his espoused pregnant wife, or should I say that the espousal that they were in, he waited until after she had given birth to Christ before they were intimate, before they consummated the marriage. But he did that so that so that there would be any possible link to him having anything to do with the conception of Christ. It was God's doing. But God chose them and picked them to to bear that burden and to carry that cross, if you will, to deal with the ridicule and to deal with the whispers and to deal with the naysayers and people on the grapevine talking about them. But yet he still he showed up for the dedication. He was there. Mary wasn't there as a single mother. Joseph was there again, acting on what God told him to do. So you and I, we need to do the same thing when we are assured in our heart of hearts. It's God. Nothing should be able to stop us. Nothing should. But until that assurance comes there, I said anything can stop us. So we need to make sure that we we know for a fact that God has called us to what it is we're doing. It's something that I want to kind of point out here in a commentary because it talks about it said God had planted. God has planted a gift within each of us. The moment we, we realize the presence of God's gift is when we must move by faith to understand and share that gift with others. And that really reminds me of a quote by Mark Twain, where he said that the two most important days of our life is the day we were born and the day we found out why. The two most important days in our life is the day we were born and the day we found out why. And that's what this particular passage of scripture, it in fact remind me of that quote, because you and I, we have, We've had a birth date and, and that's the day that we came into and came into being in this earth, the, the day that we were born. So that's the first day. But the next day is the day we found out why. Why did God birth you? Why did God make sure that you were here in this world? Why did God make sure that you showed up at this time right now in history? Being the age and being the sex that you are, being the being from the family that you are. Why? Why do you think God puts you here? And the only person that can really truly answer that is God himself. And I tell people all the time, listen, God has that answer for you. And it's up to you and him to figure it out. But if you're honest enough, if you listen close enough, he'll show you. 
he'll let you know beyond a shadow of a doubt. But then the question is, what are you going to do? Because he don't make us robots. We still are free moral agents. We have a chance to choose. That's why Jesus said, he that endure to the end shall be saved. We have a choice. We can, if you stop running the race, you've, you've given up. But if you keep running, you'll get to the finish line. So as believers, we need to make sure that we are doing what God has called us to do and doing it in such a way it's going to bring honor and glory to his name. The section that says the closing thought. Jesus, Jesus was called as a savior before his birth. Jeremiah was destined for a for prophetic ministry from the womb. Likewise, each of us have been ordained for a special purpose in the kingdom of God. We are called to participate in God's promise to his people. Too often, we seek God's promise from others, seeking promotion and other personal gain. The gifts and promises of God are never for anyone's self-promotion or personal greatness. They're, they are always given for the blessing and benefit of God's people. That's something that we need to know. Remember that as you tap into your gift and begin to use it for God's glory, you will be given honor to God. That, that goes back to what I just said about in the end, God gets the glory. You know, oftentimes we ask questions of other people. I mean, we'll question people, we'll get them in the third degree. But when was the last time you asked the question of yourself? When was the last time you asked yourself the question of, why did God make me? Why am I here? What gifts do I have? Why did God put me where I am with the people that I know, the job that I work at, the school that I'm in? the family that I have, why? And then those are some questions that you and God, y'all can, can pan that out together. But oftentimes people don't even ask themselves that question. They don't try to find out. They don't try to find out why they are the way they are. They don't try to look at themselves. And I know it's a lot of work. Sometimes it's, it's like cleaning out the garage. You just close, just close the door. <laughs> I don't even want to look at it, just close the door. But if we are ever to be who God called us to be, we have to put in the work to find out what it is God has put in us. And not only what he put in us, but why? Why are you gifted? Why do you spend time talking to senior citizens? Why does that just, just does your heart good? Or why is it that children just light you up? I mean, you can spend all day with them. Why? He, finding out why God has made you the way you are gives you a sense of purpose sense of meaning. And when you can find that out, you can actually operate in a way that God intended. And in the end, God gets the glory. The section that says your life. It says this week, set aside daily time for prayer and meditation combined with the personal study of God's word. Seek guidance and understanding for your unique gifts from God and God's plan to use that gift to serve others and glorify his name. Now that's just what I finished telling you to do. That's just what I finished saying. Spending time to find out what gifts God has put in you and how you can use those to give him glory. Dr. Miles Monroe said, the fruit isn't for the tree and your gift isn't for you. It's for the people to whom God sent you to serve. So who are you feeding? Are you letting them go hungry? Are they starving because you don't want to show up? I pray that's not the case. I pray that's not the case. The section that says your world, it says plan to connect with at least one person to pray about how both of you can, in God's timing, use your respective gifts to make a difference for others. I had a meeting with a friend of mine just this past week and we did exactly this and not knowing that I was going to be reviewing this lesson, but we did exactly this. We actually were holding each other accountable to the gifts that God has given each of us. And they are different gifts and that's good. 
Because he can do stuff I can't, I can do stuff he can't. We complement each other. We're not in competition. And that's where I believe the body of Christ needs to be. You need to recognize somebody else's gift and see it as an asset and not a liability. See it as something that's to be used for the glory of God and not a threat against your own personal ambitions. So this should, this is powerful. And I, I encourage you, I implore you, do that. Find somebody that you know. Ask God to lead you to somebody that you can spend time with and y'all can do this thing right here. Because I tell you one thing I know is that God's gift, it's not for us, but it's for the world. It says a closing prayer. Lord, we humbly seek your guidance as we strive to align our wills with yours. You have blessed your entire creation with the grace of your many gifts. Reveal your will to each and to each of us and teach us to be humble as we labor to do your will and your work. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. What a powerful lesson. Making sure that we understand that we have a call to participate in a promise. I know we're talking about the birth of Christ and I know we're in the Christmas season. And yet, you sometimes overlook what Mary and Joseph had to go through. But how they went through it like champs. In spite of what people said about them, in spite of how they talked about them and whispered behind their back, they continued to do what God had given them to do. Please let that be said of me. Please let that be said of you. That you don't allow what people think or say keep you from doing what God has called and given you to do. My encouragement to you is that you spend time with God in prayer for him to make it clear what it is he would have you to do. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you in on a little secret. If you think about the things that you do for God, that you don't even look at your watch, that you hate when it's over, that you find yourself just all caught up in, and, and your countenance changes, your voice gets high, and you talk about it with a certain enthusiasm and passion, that's a good indication. That's a good indication that that's what God has called and given you to do. But again, you have to go to him. He has to confirm and answer that. I remember several years ago, I went up to Pastor May after Bible study and I said, Pastor May, I believe God has given me the gift of teaching. And he has. Because when I do it, I become a to not a totally different person. I just become a better version of myself. I get so excited and inspired being able to just share the truth of God's word. And so my thing is this, there's something that God has given you to do. And I don't care how big or how small you think it is. Joseph and Mary, they were being a parent. <laughs> they were watching over a child. But oh, what a child he was, the savior of the world. Listen, I want to close in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this lesson, which reminds us that we all have a purpose. Just as Christ came to be the savior of the world, to be God with us, to be Emmanuel. God, you've called us to a life and to a life of service. You've gifted us with gifting that we can deliver to this world. Help us to be mindful of that truth and help us to take the responsibility of God putting that gift out and using it for your glory, not for selfish gain and not for self-promotion, but that you may get the glory out of our lives. God, help us, each and every one of us, as we, God, even during this season of life, which is supposed to be, God, a glorious time of the year. So many are hurting, so many are struggling, so many have been touched by God, death, and Lord, just, just so many challenges of life. But God, you are still the reason for the season. You sending your son to come into this world to, to be the savior of the world. is still the greatest gift that mankind has ever been given. You know, my prayer is that more people will receive the gift, the gift of salvation in the person of your son, Jesus Christ.
I ask right now, Lord God, that you would touch everybody who's watching, everybody who's tuned in, everybody who's looking, everybody who's listening. God, meet them at the point of their need. And I pray for that person right now that's, that's struggling, and that person that needs to feel your love. My, my prayer is that you will wrap your loving arms around them right where they are and bless them with the blessing they stand in need of. Father, we just thank you in advance for what you're going to do, for how you're going to Lord, make everything better and, and fix the, you're going to right the wrongs. You're going to make the crooked places straight, and bring the high places low and bring the low places high. God, you're going to do that. We just trust you. God, we put our life, our hearts, our souls in your hands. God, keep our minds stayed on you. And you said you'll keep us in perfect peace. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you, my cup is full. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. It is full. Because this lesson just reminds me of the importance that God has given. He has something for us to do, and we just need to do it. And look, this has been Deacon Sakoni Prince of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is our pastor. I want to thank Pastor May for allowing me this opportunity to teach the Sunday school lesson. And I want to thank God just for him being who he is. I want to thank God for our Ministry of Christian Education, Sister Carol Rogers, and for her faithfulness and dedication to that position. And also the superintendent of our Sunday school, Deacon L.K. Wimbush. Deacon L.K. Wimbush, we appreciate you and for all that you do for the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church. And again, I want to thank you for tuning in. And I ask if you didn't so done, if you haven't done so already, I ask you to like and share this video so somebody else can get this message. Because we all need that level of encouragement. We all need to, to know that God has a purpose in us being here. And we all need to walk in that purpose. I want to thank God for my wife and my children. And my prayers that God's richest blessings be yours. We'll talk to you later. Bye.